This is a trig substitution integral requiring me to manipulate the interior of the square root using the completing the square process. And I'm going to do this to fit the form of a Pythagorean trigonometric identity. So if I do the completing the square process, I'll just say CTS, I have x squared plus 4x minus 12. And all I'm trying to do with completing the square is take care of all these variable pieces with a single squared binomial and then I'll, I'll make up I'll make up for what I've done and make some adjustments so that it actually uh, makes sense and is equal to what I started with so I'm just trying to guess here if I were to square a binomial to give me an x squared plus a 4x plus other stuff what would that binomial be and x plus 2 gets it done when I multiply maybe I'll just put this in a thought bubble this is the part that I do mentally. When I multiply x plus 2 by itself, it gives me x squared plus a 2x plus another 2x. Those are the cross terms, so that's 4x, and then plus a 4. All right, so I've taken care of all these variable pieces with a single squared binomial, and that's the whole point. However, by writing this piece the first two terms as x plus 2 quantity squared I have added 4 to this expression so that's the adjustment that I have to make I'm going to subtract 4 to make up for it so I end up with x squared x plus 2 squared uh, minus 16 and that's an equivalent way of writing the interior of the square root so now you can see that I have a variable thing squared minus a constant and we're going to be able to fit the form of a trig identity with this all right, so I have the integral dx over square root quantity x plus 2 squared minus 16. And then maybe we'll just pop up another thought bubble here. What trig identity do I want to use? I have a variable thing squared minus a constant. Not going to get it done with this one. You basically just have two trig identities to choose from. You could do the one with cotangents and cosecants, but it's equally useful in its form to this one. And I'd rather mess around with tangent and secant instead. So I've, I can manipulate this quickly to look like variable thing squared minus 1 equals a single trig function squared. I'm going to go let x plus 2. I want to replace that with a single thing. Let x plus 2 equal, well I'm not just going to use a secant of theta here because I have a 16 I need to factor out before I can clean things up. So I just asked myself what do I square to get 16 and it's 4 so I'm going to use a 4 secant theta. When I square that I'll get 16 secant squared. I can factor the, the 16 out and I should have something that looks like this identity that I'm trying to match. Alright so then my integral becomes Oops, let's go ahead and get the differential. dx is going to be 4 secant theta, tangent theta, that's just the derivative of secant, d theta. All right, so my numerator is now 4 secant theta, tangent theta, d theta. My denominator, I'm going to take x plus 2 and square it. That gives me a 16 secant squared theta minus 16. Let's pull a 16 out of the square root. That becomes a 4. And there's a 4 waiting in the numerator to cancel that, so that's nice. Secant squared theta minus 1. All right, and in this next step, I'm going to replace secant squared theta minus 1 with tangent squared theta. But when I square root that, I get a tangent theta. So I have secant theta, tangent theta, d theta over tangent theta. The tangent theta is cancel, and I'm left with simply the integral of the secant function. Um, this is one of those that 
really just should be memorized uh, because the derivation is not simple. So I end up with the natural log of the secant plus the tangent. Okay, I'm not done until I get an answer in terms of x. So I've got to somehow transform in terms of x, and that requires solving for theta. So I'm going to go back up to where I did my substitution. I say, okay, x plus 2 over 4 is equal to secant theta. And that means theta is the inverse secant of x plus 2 over 4. So my answer is really natural log absolute value secant of the angle whose secant is x plus 2 over 4. That part's easy. And then I have the tangent of the angle whose secant is x plus 2 over 4. And a trig function of an inverse trig function is a really important skill to have. It does actually come up a lot. Uh, the secant of the angle whose secant is x plus 2 over 4. That's the easy part. They just undo each other. I'll just write it like that. But then the tangent of the angle whose secant is x plus 2 over 4, I'm going to need to think about this geometrically. So I'm going to draw a little right triangle. I'm going to say, okay, here's the angle I'm talking about. That's this right here. And it's the angle whose secant is x squared over 4. Um, well, the secant's 1 over the cosine. Cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse, so secant must be hypotenuse over adjacent. So the angle whose secant is x plus 2 over 4 must look like this. When I take the secant of it, I do the hypotenuse over the adjacent, and yeah, it checks out. That's the angle whose secant is x plus 2 over 4. Now I need the tangent of this angle. So I've got to find this missing side right here. And if I apply the Pythagorean theorem, 4 squared plus question mark squared is equal to the quantity x plus 2 squared. So my question mark, I guess I don't need to write another one right there. My question mark, doing a little bit of algebra, I'm going to subtract the 16, that's 4 squared, and then square root. It's going to be x plus 2 quantity squared minus 16, but that's exactly the thing in the square root I started with. So that's square root x squared plus 4x minus 12. So finally, I get my answer. I have the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 2 over 4 plus tangent of, of this angle. So I'm going to do the opposite over adjacent. So I'll just move the 1 fourth out in front. 1 fourth square root x squared plus 4x minus 12 plus c. Now there's one more um, funky thing about this that I wanted to point out. And that is that using log properties in an expression that has an arbitrary constant I could actually write this um, as x plus 2 plus the square root part divided by 4. Running short on space here. But that could be written as the natural log the absolute value of x plus 2 plus root x squared plus 4x minus 12 minus the natural log of 4 plus an arbitrary constant. Well, natural log of 4 or negative natural log 4 plus an arbitrary constant is just a different arbitrary constant. So I can absorb that into the arbitrary constant, and that allows me to write things in a little bit simpler form. Um, so this came up when I was checking my answer with a computer algebra system. There was a disagreement in the way the answer looked. And it turned out it was just a constant being absorbed into the arbitrary constant. 